So now let's configure ISP router 2. So conf t router OSPF1 network 8882. That's the loopback. Network 8152. That's the gigabit interface. Put that in area zero. Show IP OSPF interface brief. OSPF is running on the interfaces. Neighbor relationship has come up. So using the show IP OSPF neighbor command, we have a full relationship to ISP router three. So show IP route, we've learnt the ISP routes via OSPF. Let's configure BGP, so router BGP 65001, neighbor 8883, remote AS 65001, neighbor 8883, update source loopback zero, neighbor 8172, this is the customer router, so customer router three. Autonomous system number is 65002, as shown here. So show IP BGP summary. We have a established relationship to ISP router three. Show IP BGP shows us that we're learning various BGP routes, including customer router one routes. Show run section BGP. So let's advertise the networks into BGP. Network 8882 mask slash 30 mask. Network 8.1.5.0 slash 30 mask. Network 8.1.7.0. Dot zero slash 30 mask. So show run section BGP. We've got a neighbor relationship configured to router three, a neighbor relationship to customer three. We advertising various interfaces into BGP. So show IP BGP. We are learning various routes. Can we ping the customer routers in autonomous system number 65,000, and the answer is yes, we can. So trace to 17111, and notice we can trace to customer router one from ISP router two. So that looks good. Let's configure ISP router five. A very similar kind of configuration. So router OSPF one, network eight eight, Eight five. Area zero network eight dot one dot six dot two. Area zero. Router BGP sixty five thousand and one. Neighbor. This is router three or ISP router three. Update source for that neighbor relationship will be the loopback interface. So show IP OSPF interface brief. OSPF is running on the gigabit interface and the loopback. Show IP BGP summary. We've got a neighbor relationship configured and up to ISP router three. Show run section BGP. We still need to configure the neighbor relationship to customer router three, and we need to advertise routes into BGP. So router BGP 65001, neighbor 8182, remote AS 65002, network. And we want to advertise these three networks into BGP. So network 8885, network 8162, and that's actually zero slash 30 mask. And then we can do the same for 81. 80. Show IP BGP. BGP routing table looks like that. Can we ping 17.1.1.1? Yes, we can. Can we trace to that IP address? Yes, we can. So we can get to customer router one. So that looks good. So we've got the ISP network configured. 
The next step is to configure customer router three. Okay, so on customer router three, router EIJRP, pick an autonomous system number. I'll choose 100. It doesn't have to be 65,002 because we're only going to be running this internally. So I'll enable EIJRP only on that interface. We need to advertise a default route to customer router four. So I'm going to type IP summary address and advertise a default route. So show run interface gigabit zero two. This allows us to advertise a default route to customer router four per these instructions here saying that we need to advertise a default route to the internal routers. I've enabled EIJRP on this interface only. So show IP EIJRP interfaces. EIJRP is only running on gigabit 02. So that's correct. Now I need to configure BGP on this router and set up neighbor relationships to the ISP routers. So neighbor 8.1.7.1, remote AS 65001, that is ISP router 2. Neighbor 8181, that's ISP router 5. We can see that the two neighbor relationships have come up. So show IP BGP summary. As we can see in the output, neighbor relationships are established. 14 prefixes have been received. Show IP BGP. Routes have been learnt, including customer router one and two. So can we ping customer router one? Yes, we can. Can we trace to customer router one? Yes, we can. You can see it's going through autonomous system number 65001, and then it goes to autonomous system number 65000. So this router can send traffic through the ISP. At the moment, traffic is going via this ISP, ISP router 2, but we've been told to send traffic via ISP router 5. So we need to send the traffic this way. So again, when I trace to say this IP address, next top is ISP router 2. But what we want to do is specify that the neighbor 8181 has a weight of, let's say, and I'll just pick a number 200 in this case. Clear IP BGP star to clear the BGP neighbor relationships. Show IP BGP, no routes have been learnt yet. We are learning some routes from neighbors. Notice this network or prefix is being advertised by this neighbor and this neighbor, but this has a higher weight now. So if I trace to 17.1.1.1.1, the traffic is going via 8.1.8.1, whereas previously it was going via 8.1.7.1. We have forced the traffic to take a certain path. So as an example, if we go to ISP router four, it's taking this route or this path via ISP router five we are forcing the traffic to go a certain direction. So that looks good. The last router to configure is customer router four. That's a simple configuration. All we need to do here is enable EIJRP. At the moment, no routing protocols are enabled. So router EIJRP 100, network 17.1.2.2, and I'll enable it that way. So show IP EIJRP neighbors. We've got a neighbor relationship. Show IP route. We've learnt a default route. So if I trace to 17.1.1.1, at the moment we are not able to get to the destination and that's because we're not advertising this network into BGP. So on customer router three, show run section BGP. I need to advertise that network 17120 into BGP. 
So network 17120. Mask used is a slash 30 mask. So show IP BGP. I'm now advertising this network into BGP on customer router three, which means that customer router four should be able to get to the destination because the other routers know how to get back. And there you go, notice the trace. The traffic goes from customer router four to customer router three, then it goes to ISP five, which is correct. Then it goes to ISP router three, then it goes to ISP router one, then to customer router two, eight one one one, and then it gets to customer router one. Notice in the reverse direction, when customer router one traces to 17121, the traffic is going via this ISP. So we go out this way, and on this side it's going out this way to ISP router five. That's a basic example of forcing traffic to go a certain path. In different labs we'll try more complex path manipulation. So I'm happy with that. I've completed these tasks. I'll save the router configurations. How did you do? Were you able to complete this lab? Did you get BGP working? Were you able to configure route reflectors? Were you able to advertise default routes successfully? Were you able to manipulate the traffic so that it took a specific path? In other words, were you able to complete these tasks? It's important that you understand BGP for the CCMP exams. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let me know if you're enjoying these videos in the comments below and let me know what other CCMP videos you want to see.